Hello everyone, hope you all are doing good. I am Ansana from LearnoHub, the free learning platform where you can study math, science and SST absolutely free at learnohub.com. In today's class, we are going to discuss ICSC class 9 physics chapter 1 measurements and experimentations. We will understand the concepts with examples and solve questions from exercise 1a. Are you ready for the session? Let's start. Let's understand what is measurement. How to measure? So here we are going to measure the length and breadth of this board. Let's see here I am using a pen and a pencil to measure the length and breadth of this board. Okay, so first let us measure the length. So from here we can start 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so here length of board is equal to is equal to 8 times length of pen or you can say 8 times pens. If you are using 8 pens, when you add them, you will be getting the length of board. Now, let us measure the breadth. Breadth of board. How to measure the breadth? Here we are having the breadth. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 and half. Okay, so here breadth of board is equal to 5 and half times the length of a pen. Okay, so here using this pen we got 8 times pen is equal to length of board and 5 and half times pens is equal to the breadth of board. Now if I am using a smaller object that is I am using a pencil. Let's see, let's measure the length. So here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, here length of board is equal to 13 times the length of a pencil. Now, what about the breadth? Let us measure the breadth. Breadth of board is equal to. So, here we are using the pencil. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 and half. So here 8 and half times pencil will give you the breadth of board. So from this what do you understand? Can this pen or pencil be used as a standard? Can it be universally accepted? No, right? Because when the object is changing, the value what we are getting is also changing. Okay, so here to length, the length and the length of pencil is related, the length of board and the length of pencil is related, but these cannot be used as a standard units. Now, what happens if the same pencil is used on another day, then what happens is you are sharpening the pencil and the size of the pencil is decreasing. Then will we get 13 pencils? The number of pencils will increase, right? When the pencil size becomes small, the number of pencil will increase to find the length of board. So, these cannot be universally taken. Now, if I have to measure the length, breadth and height of this box, I am using the pen first. So, first we will find the length, length of the box. Here we have the length 1, 2. 2 times pen is the length of box. Next, the breadth. Just 1 times the pen is the breadth of box. 1 pen. Height. Height is equal to 1, 2. 2 times pen will give you the height of the box. Okay. When we are using this pencil, 1, 2, 3. 3 times pencil. Length is equal to 3 times pencil. Breadth is equal to 1, 2. 2 times pencil. And height is equal to 1, 2, 3. Height is 3 times Pencil. So, to measure the length, breadth and height, that is the different dimensions of objects, we can use different objects. But the thing is, they are not universally accepted. In olden days, these types of objects were used in order to make the measurement. There were not a, a meter scale or something like that was not there to, in order to measure. So, different objects were used. But the thing is that the accuracy is different. Okay? They, won't, they, won't, they are not accurate. They had many limitations. Due to this reason, some standard forms were later introduced. 
Now we understood how to measure. Let's see what to measure. There are some quantities which can be measured either directly or indirectly. For example, when your mother sends you to shop, she won't ask you to buy one apple or two apple. She will be saying one kg apple. One kg apple or two kg orange. Okay. When you go to a textile shop, you will be asking for two meter cloth. If you need to buy oil or milk, you will be saying one liter oil or half liter milk. So here all these things, apple, apple is weight, orange is weight, the cloth is measured. Okay, oil, we are taking the volume of oil, one liter, we are taking the volume of the milk. Yes, so in all these cases, we are measuring some things and the quantities that can be measured directly or indirectly, we call them physical quantities. Okay, understood what are physical quantities? So if something is measured here using the weighing machine, you can measure what the weight of the apples, what the weight of oranges is. Okay, so now the physical quantities are of two types. One is fundamental quantities and the second is derived quantities. Let's learn in detail what they are. First one is fundamental quantities. So we said physical quantities are of two types and the first is fundamental quantities. Fundamental quantities are the quantities which can be measured directly. That is they are independent of other quantities. For example, when you take one kg of apple, in order to measure apple, no other quantity is required. So here we can easily get the mass of apple. If you take one meter cloth, so in order to measure cloth, if you have a measuring tape, you can measure two meters of cloth or one meter of cloth. You don't have, you are not depending on any other quantities. If you have to measure temperature, if you, you go to a doctor and uh, you feel like having fever, in that case, what the doctor does, she will take the thermometer and measure the temperature. Okay, and you will say this much degree Celsius of, Celsius is a temperature. So here to measure temperature, we are not depending on any other quantities. Somebody asks you, what is the time? And you will be saying 5.30 p.m. Here to measure time, we are not depending on any other quantities, right? So there are quantities which are independent of other quantities. These quantities are called fundamental quantities. There are seven fundamental quantities. First one is mass, 1 kg apple, 2 kg apple, then length, 2 meters of cloth, temperature, 100 degrees Celsius, 50 degrees Celsius, then amount of substance, how much substance are there? Okay, then electric current, you can measure the electric current, a meter is a device that is used to measure electric current and this electric current is independent of other quantities. Then you have time, time, this much time that is in hours, seconds or minutes, you can measure time. Luminous intensity in order to get the brightness, brightness of a bulb, brightness of any objects can be measured using luminous intensity. So these seven are the fundamental quantities. Using this fundamental quantities, we will have other quantities as well. Okay, apart from the seven fundamental quantities, there are two more quantities. First one is plane angle and the second is solid angle. So these two are called supplementary quantities and we'll be discussing them in detail. Next is derived quantities. As the name suggests, derived means you are using the seven fundamental quantities to make new quantities. Okay, these quantities which are derived from Fundamental quantities, using fundamental quantities, we call them derived quantities. For example, when you take velocity, what is velocity? We know velocity is displacement by time. Okay, displacement. Displacement, it will be the length. The fundamental quantity is length. Okay, and time is also a fundamental quantity. For using these two fundamental quantities, we are getting a derived quantity, velocity. When you take speed, speed is equal to distance by time. In case of distance, again length is the fundamental quantity. Time is also a fundamental quantity. Using these two fundamental quantities, we are getting speed, which is a derived quantity. Next, if you take acceleration, acceleration is equal to velocity by time. So velocity already we have derived. Yes, velocity is displacement by time. From that we are, can derive acceleration. So acceleration is also a derived quantity. Next, when you take linear momentum, linear momentum. So this linear momentum is also a derived quantity from mass and velocity. Okay, mass is a 
fundamental quantity velocity is made up of two fundamental quantities which is displacement and time so using these three fundamental quantities we get a derived quantity linear momentum understood what the concept of derived quantities is okay next is a measurement of physical quantities how to measure physical quantities first example when we took we had measured the length and breadth of the board and we got length of board is equal to 8 times pence okay here pen is the object that we are using in order to measure the length of board so this pen is a unit but we know that this pen cannot be universally accepted because the size can change from place to place so if from here i'm using a pen and i'm asking my friend from a different place to measure the length of a same kind of a board then if it's using a different pen, we won't be getting the same answer. It may be 9 pens or it can be 7 pens. Okay. Now, also we got that the length of board is equal to 13 pencils. Okay. If you are using the same pencil next day. But what you did is that you have sharpened the pencil and the size of the pencil has decreased. So that you had to use... 15 pencils the next day again the very next day what happens you had again sharpened the pencil and the size of pencil had decreased in that case you will have to use 17 pencils so what is it so from time to time the number is changing okay number of times the unit is repeating is changing yes so we know that they cannot be stand uh, they cannot be universally accepted so here you will be getting the magnitude of the quantity using this formula where u is the unit okay here pen and pencils are the unit that we have used or the objects that we have used in order to make the measurement and n is the number of times number of times the unit is contained in this okay if you say that 1 kg or 10 kg of apple so here you can see that 10 is the n value okay number of times the unit is contained is 10 into kilogram kilogram is the unit that is being used if you say 20 kilometers in 20 kilometers you can see 20 is the number and kilometer is the unit Okay, if we say 3 liters of milk, 3 liters of milk, in that case N is equal to, what is N? N is equal to 3 and the unit is liters. Understood? So, this is how you can measure the physical quantity. So, we know how to measure physical quantities. To measure the physical quantities, we need to use the physical units. So, to measure physical quantities, we will be having physical units. So, let's see what are physical units. Physical units are the units which are standard and they are universally accepted. For example, when you say pencils or pen, in order to, when you use pencils or pen objects to measure the size of objects, you cannot universally accept them because with time and with place, it can change. So, there are some essential requirements of physical quantities. The first one is it should be of suitable size. Okay. So, in order to measure the length of a road, if you're using this pen, you have to measure the length or the distance between Bangalore and Delhi. In that case, if I am using this pen, can I use this? No, right? So, the object that is being used to measure the object, that is the length of something, it should be of a suitable size, it should be an acceptable size. Second is, it should be easily accessible. Easily accessible means easily it should be available. So, if you are using some thing in order to measure if you let us say meter scale you are using meter scale in order to measure the length in that case if this meter scale is not available easily in that case you cannot use it right so it should be easily accessible okay and the third one it should not vary with time this you can remember with the example of pencil so if you are using pencil what happens next day the size will decrease again the very next day sharpening the size will decrease again sharpening the size will decrease so different days when you take the measurement the size is decreasing when the size decreases the number of pencils being used will increase there is difference so you cannot use pencil as a standard unit 
For fourth one, it should be easily reproducible. That if it is damaged or if something happens, you can easily replace it. Fifth one, it should not depend on physical conditions like pressure, volume, temperature, etc. If you're using ice cubes, okay, if you're using ice cubes in order to measure something, in that case, you will understand that when you take the ice cube out, it will change into water. That is, the state is changing with variation in temperature and pressure. Now, what happens? Can you use it as a standard unit? No, right? So, it should not, it should be independent of the pressure, volume and temperature. So, these are the five important points you have to remember while selecting the physical units. So, there are two types of physical quantities, fundamental quantities and derived quantities. Similarly, you will be having two types of physical units, fundamental units and derived units. Let's see for fundamental, what are fundamental units? For fundamental quantity, there will be fundamental units. So, these quantities or the units which cannot be derived or it cannot be resolved into other forms are called the fundamental units. So, first, you have studied seven fundamental quantities. For the seven fundamental quantities, there will be seven units. First, when you take mass, in mass, if you say 3 kg of apple, it is kilogram is the acceptable unit of mass. Second is length. Length, 3 meters of cloth. 3 meters of cloth. So, this length is measured in meter and meter is the fundamental unit of length. Next, when you take temperature, you will be thinking that degree Celsius is the unit of temperature, but it is not degree Celsius. Kelvin is the unit of temperature. Usually, when you go to check your fever, you check your temperature, it will be some, de some degree Celsius. So, it is not degree Celsius, it is Kelvin that is the acceptable unit of temperature. Next, amount of substance is mole, M-O-L-E, and the symbol is M-O-L. Next is electric current. You can measure the electric current using a device called a meter. There will be values like a meter, milliameter, microammeter. So you will be getting the values there. So ampere is the unit of acceptable unit of electric current is ampere. Remember it is small letter A. When you write the unit, you will be using small letter A. And you are representing with the unit capital letter A. Okay. Next time. Time is it is not hours or minutes, it is seconds. Okay. Seconds is a fundamental unit of the fundamental quantity time and it is represented by the symbol S. Next, luminous intensity. As we said, luminous intensity is used to measure the brightness. Candela is a unit which is represented by C. So, these are the seven important fundamental units. For fundamental quantities, they have the fundamental units. Next is derived units. We said what are fundamental units? U using fundamental units, we are going to derive some units. These are called derived units. When you take the example of speed, speed we know is distance by time. So, distance is a fundamental quantities. It is a length. Okay. For length, what is the unit? Length is meter. The unit of length is meter. What about time? Second. So, the unit of speed is meter per second and this meter per second is a derived unit. When you take velocity, velocity is equal to displacement divided by Time. What is the unit of displacement? Displacement is a the length. Therefore, the unit is again meter and time the unit is second. So, this is meter, this is again meter per second. For speed and velocity, the derived unit is meter per second. It can also be represented as ms raised to minus 1. Next, when you take acceleration, acceleration, acceleration is equal to here, acceleration is velocity divided by time. The unit of velocity we have already derived. The derived unit we have got which is meter per second. Okay. So, meter per second divided by second which is meter per second square or ms raised to minus 2. This is a derived unit of acceleration. Next, if we are taking linear momentum. Linear momentum. This is the derived quantity, which is mass into velocity. Mass into velocity. So, mass, the unit, the mass is a fundamental quantity and the unit is kilogram. Velocity, meter per second. So, kilogram meter per second is the derived unit of linear momentum. So, got it? So, you can derive the units if you know the formula to find speed, if you know the formula to find velocity, if you know the formula to find acceleration, if you know to find 
linear momentum or if it is if you're calculating for work energy whatever it is in all these cases if you know the formula and the unit the fundamental units of different fundamental quantities you can find the derived units clear system of units so we have studied the fundamental units and derived units so a complete set of these units is called the system of units there are four systems of units first one is the fps system then cj system mk system and the si units or the international system of units first let us see fps system here we will be taking the length mass and time Thus, we are going to take the length, unit of length, unit of mass and unit of time in all these four systems. So, first one is FPS system. In FPS system, the length will be in foods, mass in pounds and time in seconds. Okay, so this is a FPS system. Second is the CGS system. What, what will we see? It should be a unit of length c is nothing but centimeters when you take the length in centimeters g grams okay mass is taken in grams and time again in seconds so in cj system you will have length in centimeter mass in grams and time in seconds and third system is mks system in mks system length will be in meters mass in kilograms and time again in seconds. So you can see that in whichever system you are taking FPS, CGS or MKS. Okay. You will be taking time always in seconds. Only the units of length and mass are different. Clear. So this MKS system. This MKS system that is the length in meters, mass in kilograms and time in second is the same for the SI units or the SI system. This SI system, this is an internationally accepted one. Okay. And the standard units you will be getting in the international system of units. In the international system of units, the accepted will be the same in the MKS system. Got it. This is also called SI is for system international. So we are going to discuss in detail about SI units, system international or international system of units. So here we have said that they are universally accepted and internationally accepted system of units are called the SI units. So for different quantities, when you take for different quantities, when you take mass, you have different units. Mass can be in kilograms, it can be in grams, it can be in milligrams, pounds etc. When you take length, length can be in meter, centimeter, kilometers. When you take time, time can be in seconds, it can be in minutes, it can be in hours, it can be in days. So you know that there are different units. Out of these different units for different quantities, one unit will be internationally accepted. And this internationally accepted units are the SI units of the different quantities. So first, when you take mass, the internationally accepted unit of mass is kilogram. Kilogram, which is represented as kg. When you take length, it is meter represented by m. For temperature, it is not degree Celsius. Again, it is Kelvin represented by capital letter K. Amount of substance, it is the U SI unit is mole, M-O-L-E and the symbol is M-O-L. Okay. Next, electric current, it is ampere, capital letter A for time, seconds represented by S, luminous intensity, candela represented by CD. So, for different quantities, these are the accepted, internationally accepted units and these are the SI units of the different physical quantities. Now, let us see the derived SI units. So we have different quantities. So, for this derived quantities, we will find their derived SI units. First one is area. When you take a square, what is the area of a square? How to find the area of square? We know the area of a square is side into side. Okay. Let's say A is the length of a side. A into A will give you the area of the square. Okay. Now, we know that it is area is equal to A into A where A is the length of side. So, this is a length and this is a length. What is the unit of length? Meters. SI unit of length is meter. So, meter into meter which is equal to meter square or it can be represented as square meter. Okay. Square meter is the derived SI unit. Next, if you are taking a rectangle, what is the area of rectangle? Area of rectangle, length into breadth. 
Okay. When you have length into breadth. Here, length, the SI unit is meters. Breadth again, meters. Meter into meter, meter square. Okay. Next, when you take a circle. For the circle, how to find the area of circle? We have a formula. Pi r square, where r is the radius of circle. We know that pi is a constant. In pi r square, pi is a constant. Next, r. r is the radius. It is a length. Therefore, the unit will be meter. Again, you will be getting meter into meter, meter square. The unit of area, the derived unit of area is meter square. Second one is volume. How to find the volume? When you take the case of a cube, a box. Okay. To find the volume. Here we have taken a cube of side A. How to find the volume? Volume will be equal to side into side into side which is a into a into a a is the length side is the length unit is meter again meter again meter so meter cube okay next when you take a cuboid when you take a cuboid what about the case of a cuboid again in case of a cuboid you will be having length breadth and height. So, length into breadth into height will give you the volume of this cuboid. Again, it is meter into meter into meter. Length is measured in meter. SI unit of length is meter. Breadth is also in meter. Height is also in meter. We will be getting meter cube. Okay. If you want to find the volume of a cylinder, volume of a cone, volume of a sphere, Volume of a hemisphere. In all these cases, the volume you will be getting in the derived unit, derived SI unit, meter cube. Next, what about speed and velocity? We have already derived speed and velocity. Speed we know is equal to distance by time. Distance is the length. Therefore, meter time second, meter per second. For velocity, again, it is meter per second, which can also be represented as ms raised to minus 1. Next is acceleration. Acceleration also we have discussed. What is the unit of acceleration? Acceleration is equal to velocity by time. Velocity, it is meter per second. Meter per second divided by second. Therefore, meter per second square or m s raised to minus 2 is the derived SI unit of acceleration. Next, what about force? What is force? Force is equal to Mass into acceleration. Acceleration we have already derived. Yes. What is the SI unit of mass? The SI unit of mass is kilogram. Therefore, kilogram meter per second square or kilogram ms raised to minus 2. So, this is a derived SI unit. Next, momentum. Momentum also we have discussed. Momentum is mass into momentum P is equal to mass into velocity. Mass in kilogram, velocity meter per second or kilogram ms raised to minus 1 is the derived SI unit of momentum. Next, energy. Energy and work will have the same unit we know. What is work? Work is equal to force into displacement. Okay. Force. The unit of force. The derived unit of force we have got kilogram meter per second square. Now, what about this displacement? Displacement is a length. It will be meters. Okay. Therefore, this becomes kilogram meter square per second square or kilogram m square s raised to minus 2. The next one, electric charge. Electric charge is equal to current into time. Okay. We have studied the unit of electric current. The unit of electric current is ampere. Ampere and unit of time is second. So, this becomes ampere second AS. Okay. So, we have derived the SI units of some derived quantities. When we spoke about the fundamental quantities, apart from the seven fundamental quantities, we have said about two supplementary quantities. So, these are the two supplementary quantities. One is plane angle and the second is solid angle. To understand plane angle, now consider this circle. I can draw the circle on this plane. So, my board is a plane surface. On this plane surface, I have drawn a circle. 
the circle here this is the center of the circle to any one point on the circle i'm going to draw a straight line okay we know what is a straight line called yes this is the radius of the circle from center a straight line which touches any point on the circle is called the radius again i'm considering another point and to this point i'm joining from center using a straight line this is also a radius okay so you can see that from here to here there is an angle made okay this angle i'm representing by some theta and this angle is called the plane angle Okay, so this angle formed is called the plane angle. Here, when you take another case, you are taking a right angle triangle. In right angle triangle, what is the peculiarity? A right angle triangle is a triangle in which one angle will be equal to 90 degree. And the side opposite to this is called the hypotenuse. Then you will be having a base and height or the altitude. So here, there are two other angles. Yes, all these angles can be called the plane angles. Okay, understood what are plane angles? So, a figure that you can represent on a plane surface. On that surface, you can, on these plane figures, you can get angles and these angles are called the plane angle. Now, what is the unit of plane angle? So, here when you consider this circle, this complete circle, you can see that the total angle, so you are using a protractor, Till here it will be 180 degree. From here to here it will be 180 degree. 180 plus 180. So the total angle subtended at the center will be equal to 360 degrees. Okay. This 360 degrees can be written as 2 pi radian. Okay. This is 2 pi radian. Now if I am taking half of this. What is the half of 360 degree? Half means this portion of the circle. Just this portion I am taking. In that case, what is half? It will be 180 degrees. 2 pi divided by 2 which is pi. So, 180 degree will be pi radian. You can represent it as R A D. Okay. Next, if I am taking just a quarter portion, that is this angle. If I am measuring, I will have to divide this 360 degree by 4. Then I will be getting 90 degree. 2 pi is divided by 4. I will be getting pi by 2. So, this will be pi by 2 radian. 90 degree will be equal to pi by 2 radian. So, here this is a unit of the plane angle represented by RAD. Radian is a unit of plane angle. So, got it. Now, what is solid angle? In case of solid angle, you will be considering different solids. If you take the case of this ice cream cone, Okay, you take the case of this ice cream cone, you need to measure the angle. Using a protractor, can you measure the angle formed inside a cone? No, right? You can see that this will look somewhat like this. This is how it is. You cannot measure this angle using a protractor. You cannot put a protractor inside this and measure what the angle at this bottom is. So, in that case, we need the area and this to get the angle. So, these angles formed in case of solids are called the solid angle. If you take a bowl, a sphere, okay, and you are removing this portion, I am cutting this portion out of it, okay. So, when you cut the portion out of it, you can see that an angle will be formed. So, here we can not represent it in 3D, but this is how it will look like and that an, an angle will be formed. This is a solid angle. Okay. This angle is called the solid angle. For example, you are taking a watermelon. When you cut the watermelon and remove a portion from it, an angle will be formed, right? So, it will be called the solid angle. The unit of solid angle is steradian. Okay. Unit of plane angle is radian and the unit of the solid angle is steradian. So, these two are the supplementary units. So, there are some important rules that you need to keep in mind while writing a SI units. First one is small letters are used for symbols of unit. So, when you take meter, when you take meter, it is always represented by small letter m. When you take kilogram, we use kg in order to represent the unit. Okay. Second point, symbols do not take plural form. For example, you will be saying that 1 kg of apple or 1 kilogram of apple 2 kilograms of apple. When it becomes 2 kilograms, still you will not write it by 2 kg s. Okay. It is just 2 kg. 2 kg of apple. Okay. 
you won't say it as kilograms when it say when you say kilograms still you will not use plural form to write it. next the third point the initial letter of a symbol is taken in capital letter when the unit is named after a scientist for example when you take the unit of force what is the unit of force we know the unit of force is newton okay in that case capital letter n that is the starting letter is n you will be using capital letter n in order to get the unit of force if you are taking joule joule is a unit of work joule is a unit of energy then you will use capital j which is again derived from the name of a scientist okay next if it is what unit of power you will represent it by capital letter w unit of current ampere you want to use small a in that case you will use capital letter a so when scientist name the units are taken you will represent the units with capital letters this is a third rule fourth rule the full name of a unit always begins with a small letter even if it has been named after a scientist we said that usually we represent these with small letters but when it is from scientists there are difference when you take the full name if you have force you are not writing it as newton and this is written as newton so this is a correct way of writing you won't write it as capital letter n here because this represent the scientist name and it becomes a unit only when you are using the small letter to represent so writing j o u l e as a unit is wrong it is j o u l e joule writing w a t t capital w a t t what is wrong it is w a t t okay ampere it is not ampere capital a this is wrong this is how the correct way is so got it so this is an important point now when you are taking some units like a derived unit when you are taking the unit of speed we know the unit of speed is meter per second so here in this case you will be taking the negative powers okay for if you have the denominator in that case you will be using negative powers this is also an important point to keep in mind for example you are use uh, you are taking the unit of momentum okay when you are taking the unit of momentum we know momentum is mass into velocity kilogram meter per second either you can write it like this that is just by leaving a space or you can put a cross mark like this kilogram meter per second or a dot between them kilogram meter per second okay so this is how this these rules you have to follow while writing the si units now we'll understand some general units so here we have the some units of time and some units of mass the first one is minute so how does minute get related to the si units okay value in si unit we are going to see minute is represented by symbol m i n we know that 1 minute is equal to 60 seconds so this is 60 seconds so next is hours how is hours related to the si unit of time so this is a unit of time we know that 1 minute is equal to 60 second and 1 hour is equal to 60 minutes okay 1 minute is 60 seconds therefore here 60 into 60 seconds which is 3600 seconds next one day day is a unit of time represented by small letter d in one day we know there are 24 hours okay 24 hours one hour is equal to 3600 seconds are for 24 into 3600 you will be getting 86400 seconds for days and year what is one year you have to leave the leap year you will be normally having 365 days 365 365 365, 365 and one year the fourth year you will be having 366 days actually it is quarter part of the day every year okay which means 365.25 this is what one year is okay these quarter portions join to form the leap year then we will take it as a complete day then in that year you will be having 366 days so 365.25 year into this 365 
365.25 into 86,400 seconds will give you what is one year in the SI unit of time. You will be getting 3.156 into 10 raised to 7 seconds. Next is degree. Degree is a unit of measuring the angle. So, we have said we have taken a circle. In the circle, the complete angle that is obtained at the center will be equal to 360 degree. This 360 degree, as I have said, is equal to 2 pi radian. Okay, 360 degree is 2 pi radian. Dividing by 2, you get half. That is 180 degree will be equal to pi radian. Okay, then what is 1 degree? 1 degree will be equal to pi by 180 radian pi by 180 radian so this pi by 180 radian is the si unit of angles so one degree will be equal to pi by 180 radian next is liters liters is a unit of volume so this liters will be equal to one decimeter cube or 10 raised to minus 3 meter cube so meter is the si unit of length we know so length into length into length will give you the volume yes so volume for volume the unit is liter next what is ton ton will be equal to 10 raised to 3 kilogram kilogram is the si unit of mass next you have carrot carrot is equal to 200 milligram okay so these are some general units that we will be using for volume normally we will be using liter so how is liter related to meter so, 1 liter will be equal to 10 raised to minus 3 meter cube. You just need to understand these things. Units of length. Not always we are using meters in order to measure length. When somebody asks you what is the distance from Bangalore to Delhi, in that case you won't be telling the distance in meters. You will be telling them in kilometers, right? So, if you are asked to find the size of a bacteria, some smaller unit of length will be required, okay? If somebody is asking you to measure the length of this pen, what you will do? You will be saying this is some 14 centimeter. You won't say it in meters, right? Centimeters is enough in order to measure the length of this pen. Somebody asks you to find the length, breadth and height of this room. In that case, you will be using meters. To measure clothes, you will be using meters. So, for different instances, you will have to use the bigger and smaller units and not always a SI unit that is meter. Now, you have to find the relation between the given units and the SI units. When you take a bigger unit of length, for example, if you are taking kilometers, we know 1 kilometer will be equal to 1000 meter. Now, if you take a smaller unit, what about centimeter? What is 1 centimeters in meters? Normally, we will be using kilometers, centimeters and meters. Okay, in daily life, you will have to do these types of measurements only. So, what is 1 centimeter? We know 1 meter is equal to 100 centimeters then 1 centimeter will be 1 by 100 meter which is 10 raised to minus 2 meters okay 10 raised to minus 2 meters so other than this there are different other units that is used in order to find the you find the length or to measure length so some units are bigger units and some are smaller units so first let's see some bigger units one astronomical unit so, astronomical unit, what is astronomical unit? When you measure the mean distance from earth to sun, that distance is the astronomical units. So, one astronomical unit, you will represent it as 1 AU and this 1 AU will be equal to 1.496 into 10 raised to 11 meters. So, this is the relation between one astronomical unit and the SI unit of length meters. Second is light year. When you find year in this, don't think that this is a unit of time. Light year is actually the unit of length. Okay, now what is light year? When you find the distance traveled by light in vacuum for one year, this is called one light year. It is represented by one Ly and that is 9.46 into 10 raised to 15 meters. So, this is the relation between light year and meters. Now, the third one parallactic seconds that is represented as parsec. One parsec. Okay. So, here you have to find the distance that is. That is when you take the distance at which when you take an arc 
of length one astronomical unit and it subtends an angle of one second. In that case, we get one parsec and the relation of one parsec or parsec and meter is 3.084 into 10 raised to 16 meters or this is equal to 3.26 light years. 3.26 light years. So this is how parsec is related to meters and light years. Then you have some smaller unit. First one is micrometers. When we have micrometer, it is represented as 1 mu m. This is a Greek letter which is used to represent micro called mu. 1 mu m is equal to 10 raised to minus 6 meter. Next is nanometer represented by 1 nm. Remember nano means 10 raised to minus 9. 10 raised to minus 9 meters. Okay. Next, angstrom unit. It is represented by A and above A a small circle. Okay. One angstrom will be equal to 10 raised to minus 10 meters. Okay. Next is Fermi. Fermi is also a unit that is commonly used. One Fermi or Fermi meter will be equal to 10 raised to minus 15 meters. So, these are some important units of finding the length, measuring length. Next, the units of mass. SI unit of mass we know is kilogram. Then you have smaller and bigger units of mass. First one is grams. How is grams and kilogram related? We know 1 kilogram is equal to 1000 grams, which means 1 gram will be equal to 1 by 1000 kilograms or that is 10 raised to minus 3 kilograms. Next is milligram. We know what the relation between gram and milligram is. 1 gram is equal to 1000 milligram which implies 1 milligram will be 1 by 1000 grams or 10 raised to minus 3 grams. Okay. 1 gram is equal to 10 raised to minus 3 kilogram. So, this becomes 10 raised to minus 3 into 1 gram is 10 raised to minus 3 kilogram. This becomes 10 raised to minus 6 kilograms. Next is quintal. So, 1 quintal will be 100 kilogram. This is a bigger unit of mass. Then you have metric ton. 1 metric ton will be equal to 1000 kilogram or 10 quintal. Now when you take, when you need to find the mass of subatomic particles like protons, electrons and neutrons, you have another unit which is atomic mass unit or this is also called unified mass. This is actually the mass of a carbon 12 isotope or a carbon 12 atom. Okay, so here 1 amu atomic mass unit will be equal to 1.66 into 10 raised to minus 27 kilogram. So this is what? 1 atomic mass unit is. Then you have a bigger unit which is solar mass. So when you have one solar mass, one solar mass will be equal to 2 into 10 raised to 30 kilograms. So these are some bigger and smaller units of mass. Clear? Unit conversion. How to convert from one system of unit to another? That is from, we have studied three systems. FPS system, CGS system, MKS system. So, when you are given in one system, the unit is given in one system, the quantity is given in one system, you will have to change, you will be asked to change to another system. So, how can you change this? Okay. So, here if you need to change from CGS to MKS, for example. Okay. So, here the length is in centimeter and here the length is in meters. You are given 20 centimeter and you are asked to find this in meters. Okay. So, what is 20 centimeters in meters? We know 1 meter is equal to 100 centimeter. Okay. 1 meter is 100 centimeter. So, 1 centimeter will be 10 raised to minus 2 meters. Okay. Here we have 20 centimeter which is 20 centimeter equal to 20 into 10 raised to minus 2 meters 0 0.2 meters. Okay. 0 0.2 meters. So, here we have converted from the CGS to MKS system. Next, you need to find what is 10 kg. Okay, 10 kg in grams. Okay, so here the conversion is from MKS to CGS system. 
okay we know 1 kilogram is equal to 1000 grams then 10 kilogram will be 10,000 grams clear next if you need to convert from the MKS system to FPS system okay so here when you have 1 meter, this 1 meter will be 3.28 foot. Okay. 1 meter is 3.28 foot. Okay. You need to find what is 2 meters in foot. How much do we get? You will be getting 6.56 foot. Okay. This is a conversion from the MKS system to the FPS system. So, if you know the relation between meter and centimeter, relation between kilogram and gram, relation between foot and meters, so you can interconvert them according to the question. Let us take an example. Name the convenient unit you will use to measure. There are four things given. First is mass of an adult man. So, how do you measure your mass? You will stand on weighing machine and you will be getting it in kilograms, right? 50 kilogram, 65 kilogram, 100 kilogram. So, here you will be using kilogram. Next, mass of a leaf of rose plant. When you compare, you will understand that the mass of a leaf will be very small. Okay, it is a small mass. In that case, you can use milligrams. Mass of a loaded truck. It is a heavy mass. So, it, you can use tons, which is a bigger units of, unit of mass. Next, mass of a mobile phone. Mass of a mobile phone, you don't need to measure it in kilograms. You can just use grams. Okay, so these are the units. Second example, write the derived unit for pressure. We are going to derive the unit for pressure. What is pressure? Pressure is the force applied in unit area. Pressure is equal to force divided by area. Now, what is the unit of force? Force we know is force is equal to mass into acceleration. Acceleration, you have a derived unit. Acceleration is velocity by time from which we have derived the unit for acceleration. And velocity we know it is displacement by time. So, displacement is a length from there we have derived the unit for velocity. Okay. For force the unit is kilogram meter per second square. Okay. Kilogram meter per second square. So, what about area? The derived SI unit of area we have found. What is it? Meter into meter, which is meter square. So, here for pressure, pressure which is force by area, you will have kilogram meter per second square divided by meter square. Okay. So, first check. Here we have mass. Here we have length. And here we have time. So, here just one unit of mass is there. That is kilogram. Meter is there, that is the unit of length is there in the numerator and denominator. Yes. So, here meter raised to 1 and when you take this to the numerator, it becomes minus 2. Then second square, which is in the denominator. Okay. S square. This becomes kilogram m 1 minus 2. m raised to 1 minus 2 is m raised to minus 1. And this second square taking up become s raised to minus 2. So, kilogram m raised to minus 1, s raised to minus 2 is the unit of pressure. Clear? Next third example, the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meter per second square. Give its unit in feet second raised to minus 2. So, meter per second square, this is given in MKS system or the SI system. Feet second raised to minus 2, this is FPS system. So, from MKS system, we are going to convert to FPS system. Okay. Now, check the units. We don't have mass. The unit of mass is not there. Kilogram is not there. We have meter and feet, which is a unit of length. So, we need the unit of length and unit of time is same. So, that doesn't, we don't need to change it. Okay. Now, the relation between meet, meter and feet, we have to find. Okay, so 1 meter will be equal to 3.28 foot. Okay, now here we have 9.8 meter per second square. 
yes so 9.8 meter per second square will be equal to 1 meter we have to convert it to foot okay that is 9.8 into 3.28 foot per second square which is equal to when you calculate you will be getting 32.14 foot per second square or approximately we can say this is 32 foot per second square. So when you have acceleration due to gravity, usually we will take it in meter per second square, which is 9.8 meter per second square. This 9.8 meter per second square is equal to 32 feet per second square. Okay. Example 4, the value of gravitational constant G in MKS system is 6.67 into 10 raised to minus 11 Newton meter square kilogram raised to minus 2. What will be its value in CGS system? So, here we are converting from MKS to CGS. So, meter should be changed to centimeter, kilogram should be changed to grams and time can remain the same that is seconds. Okay, now the relation, 1 meter we know is 100 centimeter and 1 kilogram we know is 1000 grams. Okay, so gravitational constant G is given 6.67 into 10 raised to minus 11 Newton meter square kilogram raised to minus 2. Now what about this Newton? This Newton should be changed, right? Newton is the unit of force. We have another unit of force. We have a derived unit for force. What was it? Force is mass into acceleration. So that is kilogram meter per second square or kilogram ms raised to minus 2. This is what Newton is. So first we are going to change this Newton equal to 6.67 into 10 raised to minus 11 kilogram meter second raised to minus 2. Then you have a meter square and kilogram raised to minus 2. Okay. Now this becomes 6.67 into 10 raised to minus 11 kilogram raised to 1 kilogram raised to minus 2. This becomes kilogram raised to minus 1. Okay. Meter, meter square which is meter cube second raised to minus 2. Now we can convert here. 6.67 into 10 raised to minus 11 kilogram. 1 kilogram is equal to 1000 gram which is 10 raised to 3 grams. Okay. So, this is 10 raised to 3 inverse. Gram inverse. Okay. Next. Meter and centimeter. 1 meter is 100 centimeters. 1 meter is 100 centimeter. So, here we have 1 meter whole cube which means 100 or 10 raised to 2 whole cube centimeter cube. Okay. Next, we have second inverse, second raised to minus 2. Keep it as it is. So, this is 6.67 into 10 raised to minus 11, 10 raised to 3 whole raised to minus 1 which is 10 raised to minus 3 gram inverse 10, 10 square whole raised to 3. This becomes 10 raised to 6 centimeter cube second raised to minus 2, which is equal to 6.67 into 10 raised to minus 11. Here we have minus 3. Here we have plus 6. Now the units gram inverse centimeter cube second raised to minus 2 which is equal to 6.67 into 10 raised to minus 11 minus 3 minus 14 minus 14 plus 6 minus 8. Okay. First in all the system we will be using the unit of length. Here the unit of length. So centimeter cube then mass gram inverse time second raised to minus 2. So, this is the final answer. Gravitational constant, the unit of gravitational constant in the CGS system. Example 5, calculate the number of light years in 1 meters. We know the relation between light years and meters. 1 light year is equal to 
9.46 into 10 raised to 15 meters. Then what is 1 meter? 1 meter will be 1 by 9.46 into 10 raised to 15 light years. When you calculate this, you will be getting 1.057 into 10 raised to minus 16 light years. Therefore, 1 meter is equal to 1.057 into 10 raised to minus 16 light years. Now let us do numericals from exercise 1a. First problem, question 1 of exercise 1a. The wavelength of light of a particular color is 5800 angstrom. Express it in nanometers and meters. So we know that the wavelength is given which is 5800 angstrom. Okay. We know 1 angstrom is equal to, 1 angstrom is equal to, 10 raised to minus 10 meters or 10 raised to minus 1 nanometer. So, the first part we have to find in nanometers. We know that 1 angstrom is equal to 10 raised to minus 1 nanometer. Here we have 5800 angstrom which is 5800 into 10 raised to minus 1 nanometer equal to 580 nanometer. 5800 angstrom is equal to 580 nanometer. Now, second one, in meters we have to find 1 angstrom is equal to 10 raised to minus 10 meters. Therefore, 5800 angstrom is equal to 5800 into 10 raised to minus 10 meters which is equal to, this can be written as 5.8 into 10 raised to minus 7 meters. Okay, so we have expressed 5800 angstrom in nanometers and meters. Second problem, question 2 of exercise 1a. The size of bacteria is 1 micro. Find the number of bacteria in 1 meter length. So, when you have 1 meter length, you have to find the number of bacteria when the size of bacteria is not given the size of bacteria. Size of bacteria is equal to 1 micron which means 1 micrometer equal to 10 raised to minus 6 meter. Okay. Total length is given which is 1 meter. Total length is equal to 1 meter. Then the number of bacteria is equal to total length divided by size of bacteria which is equal to 1 meter divided by size of bacteria is 10 raised to minus 6 meter. The units can be removed you get 10 raised to 6. So, the number of bacteria is equal to 10 raised to 6. Okay. Third problem this is the last problem for today question 4 of exercise 1a the wavelength of light is 589 nanometer what is its wavelength in angstrom? So, what is the relation? We know 1 angstrom is equal to 10 raised to minus 10 meters or 10 raised to minus 1 nanometer. So, here the, uh, the wavelength is given which is 589 nanometers. Okay. If 1 angstrom is 10 raised to minus 1 nanometer, then what is 1 nanometer? 1 angstrom is equal to 10 raised to minus 1 nanometer. Then 1 nanometer is equal to 1 by 10 raised to minus 1 angstrom which is taking this 10 raised to minus 1 to the numerator you get 10, 10 angstrom. Okay. So, we have 589 nanometer. 589 nanometer will be equal to 5890 angstrom that is 589 into 10 angstrom which is 5890 angstrom. Clear? That's all for today. In today's class, we have discussed the different physical quantities, fundamental quantities and derived quantities. We have studied their units and their measurement, the different system of units, the conversion from different system of units. Hope you all enjoy the session. I'll be back in the next session. Until then, stay tuned to Learn Hub. Learn Hub free hai, par best hai. Thank you.